it's still the city newsroom and as you're well aware of um some weeks back, one of our reporters here, Caleb Kuda, was assaulted by operators of the National Security for, um, in their own terms, unlawfully taking videos of um, some cars in their premises. Also, um, subsequently, our reporter, Zoe Abubedi, was arrested at the premises of City FM and City TV um, following that um, arrest of Caleb Kuda. She was picked up because um, she had received some footage from Caleb Kuda on the videos he had taken at the national security premises. Now, City FM and City TV, we've petitioned the National Media Commission on the matter. They've told us they'll take two weeks to look into the matter and give us a report. Subsequently, the national security has also, um, in a statement, said that um, the officers who had assaulted Caleb, um, disciplinary action have been taken against them. They've been asked to uh, report to um, the defense ministry and as well as um, other authorities on the matter. But in the midst of that, as we submit our petition to the National Media Commission, we have been also submitting that petition to other institutions um, on the matter. Today we've come to the uh, Ghana Charismatic Bishops Conference to also present our petition to them. Join me as um, we do that. So we are hoping that you give us your support and situate this within your broader national security conversation to make Ghana better. We, we sympathize with you. Uh, security issues are a big uh, issue with us as well. And we can absolutely relate with the trauma that your colleague have felt and some of the issues that you've raised here. And I think that So the city newsroom, we continue with um, the petitioning or handing over the petition that we've done with the National Media Commission with regards to the assault of Caleb Kuda as well as Zoe Abu Beidu, the um, subsequent arrest of Zoe, uh, the premises of City FM and City TV. And today we've come to the um, um, Charismatic Bishops um, conference uh, to also do the same here. I've been joined by his general secretary to pick his thoughts about the incident and the way forward on this matter. You're welcome to the City News Show. Thank you very much, Vivian. So we're here um, today showing us, showing you what we've done so far with regards to our petition to the media, National Media Commission. I'm sure you've heard of the story so far. What are your initial thoughts about what we, what, what we experienced as a um, th Thank you for um, coming by the Ghana Charismatic Bishops Conference to bring us your petition. Um, I think we've followed some of the happenings on your earlier bulletins, on your news, on your TV and radio stations. I think we've read some of that as well on CTFM Online. And the first thing we'd like to say is that our sympathies definitely to Caleb, to Zoe, um, to the wider city family. Um, this is definitely a harrowing thing. And it's not the sort of thing that we will expect from the Ghanaian security services. Uh, I think the security services have been giving the power to bear arms on behalf of the Ghanaian people, to protect them, to keep them safe. Safety is one of our comparative advantages as a country, and I think that this is totally unbecoming of that, of that personality. Um, so it's a very, very sorry situation, and we're very sorry about the pain you've gone through, and it's something we would like to see not in our society at all. Over the period, we've seen quite a number of attacks on journalists and all that, and uh, there have been calls for well-meaning Ghanaians to, um, you know, join the fight against such um, atrocities against, you know, journalists. What are your thoughts on that? We, we totally agree. I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't, I would say that um, security services um, maltreating, manhandling unjustly, um, 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 without judicial um, 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 cause, um, or treating citizens of the country, it's absolutely not the right thing. But it seems to fit into a much wider, for us, a much wider systemic failure when it comes to law and order in the country. Um, we've, 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 we've had occasion in the past, at least since 2017, to write repeatedly about the breakdown of security in the country. Too many Ghanaians live in fear because of armed robbery. Too many Ghanaians have lost fathers, mothers, husbands, sisters, mothers, uh, as a result of this much wider security situation. And I think what's happened with Caleb and Zoe, it's, um, it's very much part of that theme. Uh, so as a country, we're going to have to look at the security services a lot more seriously. We definitely have to equip them. They're going to have to be a lot more professional. They're going to have to understand their place in protecting Ghanaians. 
and they're going to have to understand what their profession requires for them to do, even when they feel um, attacked or they feel that some rules have been broken. Definitely the sort of stories or uh, the story as you've told it to us um, is not what we like, will expect of, of the Ghanaian security services. And we think that all of, these much, all of these wider issues need to be addressed and dealt with. I think that way Ghana will be a much better place, um, uh, will, be, will be the great benefit, beneficiary. Of it. And finally, you guys have written a lot on security and all that. What are some, some of the key um, trends you noticed in the stories that you've you know, come across and people have shared with you? Uh, the, the first thing I will say we've noticed is the, is the amount of fear and trauma that people have to live with. Sometimes not so much because they suffered um, the particular attack, but just that the fear of it happening. So a neighbor in your, somebody in your neighborhood gets attacked, and then you have to live for the rest of your life for decades in that neighborhood, wondering if you could be the next. So it's one thing being the, 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 the victim of, of an attack, but it's a whole other thing, constantly living under this cloud of fear. And almost every Ghanaian is forced to live under the fear of, of, of the breakdown of security in the country. So that's a big issue. The other thing for us as well, it's obvious that the security system is not properly set up. And one of the benchmarks that we've set for it is the ease with reaching the police. There still isn't one number that is commonly known by Ghanaians that, is easily, uh, that easily gets Ghanaians to access the police. If you went into any country around the world, they would have a number, 991, uh, 119. People, every, every country, in Ghana, this is still not a settled matter. You ordinarily would get a 0264332 number. That's the number for the police. And, and I think that's the, that's the easiest barometer we should set as a country and say, we want to be able to get the entire country to use one number to reach the police. And the police will be here if you call that number in three to five minutes. If we can reorganize the entire um, police system to start off, to be able to operate and deliver on this one number issue, uh, and it's something that becomes part of the Ghanaian fabric, uh, I think we will have taken a giant step forward. And that for us is a, is a basic issue that we would like to put forward. We would like to engage you as well, your station, if you guys can also join us in that campaign. That let's reorganize the entire security system. Let's have one number that any Ghanaian who's under fear, threatened, hurt, attacked can call and get somebody to assist them immediately. That will make a big, big difference. Thank you very much. For it. It's still the City Newsroom. We'll be right back.